Hello again, everybody. Scott Casper, Takedown Media. Our coverage of the sport continues today. We find ourselves in North Carolina, and why not? Pack Wrestling went on the road and again came up with a huge victory, much like they did with the Hawkeyes at Carver Hawkeye Arena. They went into Lincoln, Nebraska, and picked up a 29 to 3 road win at the then ranked number 12 Nebraska. Well, the number six NC State team is coached by this man, Pat Papalizio. Pat, welcome back. How are you? Doing wonderful. Thanks for having me. A couple things I want to talk about. Of course, the important win at Nebraska Friday night last week. But I do also want to talk about the planning, the preparation, the mental preparation for this monster trip coming up, much like a bowl game, January 5th, Naples, Italy. We'll talk about that first. Let's get underway as we talk about going on the road to Nebraska. Nebraska, part of the Big Ten. NC State has become um, known as a Big Ten program killer. Let's talk about that 29-3 victory. What was the attitude going into Lincoln? Uh, you know, we knew it was going to be a tough environment, and then anytime you're wrestling uh, Nebraska, you know you're going to be in for a, a tough, hard-fought match with whatever weight class you're wrestling. So, we were pretty much prepared for, for that kind of uh, battle that we faced, and uh, I was proud of the way our guys stepped up and responded to the travel that we went through, and then obviously going out there and competing in a very tough environment against a really good Nebraska team, um, and our guys obviously showed up and competed very well. So, so I did. See. You have this is the fourth straight year you guys have faced each other and the road team has won each time out. I don't know if there's some significance to that, but let's start at 57 where Hayden Hilde started out the pack with a top 10 upset. Uh, some would say it's an upset. Others would say perhaps Hayden is underranked. Uh, the reigning ACC wrestler of the week improved to an eight and zero start with the season six and three win over a seven ranked Tyler Berger. Talk about Hayden Hilde's important start for the pack. Yeah, I mean, we knew that was a match that, you know, at the time going in, we, we figured it was going to be some uh, back and forth matches uh, individually. And that was one that we had to zone in on one for our team. And then more importantly for Hayden himself and uh, getting some momentum going for him and his season. And we just we knew it was a matter of time before, you know, people realized how good he actually is. And I think when you can get wins over guys that placed and are in the national finals, um, that proves kind of where you're at and it's it's still early in the season but it's good to know you know he's in his freshman year right now competing and he's at that level already you know and i i often have trouble with a name like hidley but i say hilde and uh, i apologize I, to that young man but how I, is it actually pronounced hidley hidley yeah it's all right. <laughs> he's used to it so he's used to it okay it's pop leaves you, know, you kind of just accept where you're at <laughs> All right. Well, my name's not a whole lot easier. But with that uh, takedown in the first and a reversal on another takedown in the third, he scored the upset victory. Nebraska then got a 9-3 decision at 65 to even the score at 3-3. Daniel Bullard, however, gave the packets lead back with a close 6-5 victory at 74. The score was tied late, 5-5. What was your instruction at this point? What were your thoughts about Bullard, and what did he need to do? Yeah, I mean, we, you know, he's one of those guys that's still – new uh freshman in our lineup right now he just needs some experience and, and some mat time um and that was a great environment for him to go out there and compete and it was one of those we just knew as time went on kind of works into his advantage the way that he wrestles so uh, you know it, it, when he scored that last takedown and then got the got taken down and got the escape we were we were thinking the higher the scoring match the more it would work in our favor and that kind of kind of happened that way so it was uh it was exciting to see him get that win on the road like that he needed that for uh for his season right now and where he's at pack mentality poppins the podcast the star of that show right now episode six by the way is up on the website gopack.com recapping the nebraska win and wwe hall of famer my buddy gerald briscoe the former cowboy of oklahoma state um in the most exciting match of the night perhaps in the number three ranked senior Redshirt senior, if I can recall, Pete Renda scored the pack's second top 10 win of the night as he downed number six ranked Taylor Venz, 9-6 at 84. Can you tell us uh, what that match meant to the mental makeup of the squad? Uh, a lot. We knew that was one of those matches. Um, you know, on their end, they were looking forward to probably getting a hold of a guy that was third in the national tournament two years ago. So we knew we were, we, you know, we had to elevate our game mentally and physically. Uh, and going into that match, Pete definitely was not at his best um, from the season. That, and that's kind of what I liked about it, talking to him before and after. He was definitely, uh, he's got, you know, 
his focus is there now. Uh, I think he showed it at the Reno tournament. But going into that, we were all a little worried. You know, he was the week before at the App State duel. He was under the weather, didn't practice pretty much all week, and uh, threw him out there. Had a tough, tough match at App State, and then coming back, he was getting closer to 100% going into that duel at Nebraska. And we were, you know, we knew it was going to be a dogfight in one of those where conditioning was going to matter because both guys wrestled with pretty good pace. And that first period, I mean, it was like two minutes in, and I think already 12 points were scored, reversal after reversal, and then we got a set of backs, and it was like, all right, let's uh, let's see how this all plays out, and if we can keep our composure, and, and he did. You and know, Ben you Ben's know. really started with a takedown. That was yeah. the wake up call for Renda. Renda yeah, then scored a reversal. All in the first 15 seconds, Ben's had a reversal of his own, answered by Renda's second in the period. But then, um, Renda then turned him for a four point near fall. And that's what got the crowd's attention. It silenced the gym. 8-5 yeah. lead at that point, 204 of riding time as well. Venz rode Renda the entire second period. I didn't understand that, but Renda answered by riding Venz the whole third. And with riding time, the, the victory perhaps wasn't as close as it might appear, but 9-6 the win. And that was, I think, a mental victory for the entire team because if Renda can do it, then everybody else should be able to. And Michael Machiavellio uh, absolutely answered the bell. Talk about his performance. Yeah, uh, you know, momentum in dual meets is everything, and I think that's what happened when we got into that situation. And then Machiavello went out there and scored a couple takedowns, and uh, you know, both guys were wrestling at a hard pace, and uh, I think that works in our favor sometimes because it, it's kind of the same thing Mach likes to do is he wrestles hard and is willing to, to put it out there on the line and. Uh, you know, we won all the little things in that match as well, and, and I think that put us in position, obviously, going in the heavyweight, and it was uh, good to see him pick up that win on the road. Malik McDonald may not be the best heavyweight in the country at this point in the season, but he's working on it, and it was evidenced by his performance. Tommy Cox followed suit at 125 with a 7-6 victory. Tariq Wilson scored the pack's first bonus point victory of the night. 17-1, coach, at 33. Yeah, he's uh, got a lot of offense, fun to watch. And, uh, you know, that's what I like w with our guys out there. And we preach that is to be offensive and, uh, you know, put on a show when you're out there competing, you know, work hard. Let's uh, utilize all our tools. And Tariq did a good job at that. Uh, got a big, big move right off the rip and uh, kind of opened things up for us uh, and obviously set up momentum going into 41, which is another big match. As high as the nation is on the eighth ranked Chad Red. Uh, who wrestles, of course, for Nebraska. Kevin Jack is coming into his own as a redshirt senior, currently sitting on a number two ranking. It was his 100th career victory at NC State, and that's something to be celebrated because not too many guys get 100 or more career victories. Kevin Jack did it in style. Talk about his performance. Yeah, uh, that was definitely a very tough match, known, you know, the level that Red's at. Um, we had to bring our A game, and Kevin did that. Um, Scored a couple takedowns, um, riding time, and uh, you know pretty much controlled the majority of the match. Let a, let a takedown late in the match against them, but that you know I think when you're out there wrestling hard for that long, you know you're gonna make a mistake. And Kevin's been you know a huge part of the the reason why NC State's made the rise. You know his attitude and um, what he's been able to accomplish on the mat has definitely put us um, in a good spot and, uh, getting us a lot of good exposure. And, and we want, you know, to continue to build on that and, uh, getting a hundred wins obviously says you're doing a lot of things right at this level. He's got great coaching obviously, and you will settle for nothing less than the absolute best from your athletes. You give them the tools, you give them the training environment, and that's the kind of athlete you are able to produce. Bo Donahue, also a redshirt senior, currently ranked number 17, dramatic comeback victory at 49. He was down 8-4 at the start of the third and then scored two takedowns and cut him. I didn't Listen, you got to cut him at some point, right? Because a tie is a tie. But he yep. clinched a victory with a takedown with just 13 seconds left on the clock, the victory 11-10. Yeah, I mean, that was icing on the cake, that match right there. And I, I think that, to me, was what you like to see with your guys and, and especially with Bo on, um, you know, being down like that it's hard to come back you, you really got to let loose and he did that uh was proud of the effort that he put in and, and willingness not to accept defeat and that's to me kind of defines you know when you look at a program are your guys willing and able to do that and uh Bo got in a tough situation responded very well and I, I think he gained a lot of confidence off that um you know probably wasn't his best performance but definitely a gutsy one 
coming into this match, uh, you guys were ranked six in the country. Uh, you've caught the attention of an awful lot of folks um, around the country, those in the media and the fans as well. 29-3, to the final road victory win at Nebraska. And then it was on to Reno. What, what was your overall thoughts of the performance of the team at Reno? Reno, uh, you know, I thought overall we, we obviously wrestled pretty solid. A lot of guys um, had some good wins across the board, and uh, we let a couple of matches slip away from us. And, and at the end of the day, that's what we went there for is to see kind of where we're at overall as a program and, and wrestle some high-level competition. We got a lot of that. Um, we were able to come back, reevaluate things we need to work on as an individual and as a team. And uh, it, w it was a perfect uh, – competition for us where we're at this point in the season having that uh match on friday night then having a day and having to make weight on sunday the travel you know kind of mirrors a little bit what you're going to see towards the end of the year and, and that's what i wanted to see is how we responded to all the travel getting up early you know we were there were i think two or three days in a row we were up four or five in the morning uh traveling so you know everybody's in the same boat and you want to see how your guys can wake up and respond and and if they can get up for the level of competition that they had to face and, and some of the guys were able to do it and some of them need to uh you know we learned we got to get a little more focused with with certain individuals and we'll, we'll continue to work on that pat poplizzi our guest next up for you guys <clears throat> pardon me coach january 5th this is monumental it's the first time a college wrestling team has competed outside the shores of the United States of America. You guys are heading to Naples, Italy, to face the Cowboys of Oklahoma State. We've got about five minutes to discuss it, Coach. Break it down. How did this come to pass? Well, it was a little bit of brainstorming, trying to do something different with our sport. You know, I feel like we're always doing the same thing, going to the same competitions. Um, we're here training over the break anyway, um, so we figured let's do this as a team on the road somewhere, if someone's willing and able, and – the luxury of having a good connection with my brother in Oklahoma State, it's something we wanted to, we've been talking about for a couple of years and then, you know, talking to John about it, it was a no brainer. He was willing and able as long as there was the right reason behind it. I think we came to a good conclusion, throwing some international matches in there and, uh, you know, that I think the experience that the student athletes are going to get and then finalize it with the high level competition. It's a no brainer and going to be an amazing event, an amazing experience for all parties involved. How difficult are the logistics? I mean, going to a military base in a foreign country, Italy has been a friend of ours for a good number of years, but there's still a, a lot of logistics, a lot of legal issues, and of course, security issues. How, how has that been for you and your staff? Uh, thank God we have Melissa Simmons here that's uh, dealing with all the logistics and uh, the administrative side of things along with my brother uh it is there's a lot to it and you don't realize it until you get going on it with the passports and everything that you have to have in place um getting on a military base i mean everything's got to be sent to them well in advance um we've been pretty organized and on top of everything um so that part of it's been good you know and then on, on top of that you got a budget you got to stay within and, and you're dealing with you know a whole new area of things that you you know we've never encountered before so Things that you don't think about that pop up in the budget do, and, and we got to pay for them. But uh, we've been, you know, for, fortunate enough that our administration has been behind us, backing us, and uh, putting us in position to be able to benefit from this and, and go on this trip. Will Athletic Director Debbie Yao be attending the, the trip with you? No, but our sports supervisor will be going, uh, Josh Dalton, who wrestled here at NC State back in the day. So. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll enjoy the trip together. I understand Debbie Yao has asked you to check on the prices of leather goods, and I'm talking about, of course, high-end bags and uh, purses and luggage. Any trip yep. to that? We'll make sure we bring something back for her. <laughs> she takes care of us, so we got to make sure we take care of her. She is a champ for the sport of wrestling, I'll tell you that. Tussle for the Troops, the event, January 5th, Naples, Italy. It's OSU versus the uh, NC State. Who will be the home team? Uh, well, they came to the agreement that whoever has the most uh, ties to Italy, and uh, <laughs> we figured the last name Papalizio gets that, so we'll be the home team. You actually, have a lot more vowels, right? Team. Our guys actually said they want to be the away team. <laughs> we, feel, we feel like we, we give a good performance on the road. You'll be able to watch this, folks, online as well. Check them out. I think it's on flow, but Tussle for the Troops, January 5th, Naples. It's going to be a lot of fun. And the military base there will be able to see a little hometown action 
Uh, the military, of course, big fans of the sport of wrestling. Pat, always good to talk to you. Congratulations on all the success. And that, of course, comes through the hard work you're putting your athletes through. It does pay off, and it pays off in a big way. Pat, thank you so very much. God bless you. Merry Christmas and a happy holidays to you and yours. Thanks. Appreciate it. Same to you. For all of us at Takedown, I'm Scott Casper. Special interview with the head coach of the Wolfpack of NC State. Go, go for uh, Look for them online at gopack.com. Easy enough to do. I'm Scott Casper. Thanks for watching.